Guiding the dog, move always toward greater simplicity, Zen saying. It was in 1961, the Israelis had just caught Adolf Eichmann in Argentina and taken him back to Jerusalem to put him on trial for mass murder and war crimes. I was living with a German couple at the time who were from Schleswig in East Germany and fearing for my life as a Jew. I was studying literature, philosophy, and art at the University of Munich. I had many friends, young Germans, born during the war or shortly before, whom I liked very much and whom I did not hold responsible for what had happened to the Jews. Nevertheless, although my year in Munich was a good one in many respects, it was the first time I had ever really slept with a woman, I was still uncomfortable and uneasy. I'll never forget a single episode which stands out in my mind as an illustration of the old German proverb, der Trog bleibt immer derselbe, nur die Schweine wechseln sich in der ersten Reihe. The troth always remains the same. Only the pigs change in the first row. I had broken my leg. I don't recall how except that I had stumbled. My entire left foot and leg were in an open toe cast. There was a streetcar that I always took from where I was living to the university. It was called the Bummelbahn because it just ambled slowly along the 27, the number 47. In the back of the streetcar, the streets were reserved for Kriegsverletzte und Schwerbeschädigte, those wounded in the war and badly injured. That day, all these seats were occupied by Germans. I was using crutches to get around and was having a difficult time. I hobbled up the two steps into the streetcar, saw that all the streets, the seats were occupied and stood over against the window in a corner. The streetcar went along its merry way and I stood for about 10 minutes. Then the streetcar stopped and an enormously fat woman got on carrying a medium-sized German shepherd in her arms. The right flank of the dog was cut open all red and folded down onto the dog's leg. Um Gottes Willen, for God's sake, the people sitting in the seats for Kriegsverletzte and Schwerbeschädigte, those wounded in the war and badly injured, shouted, and all at once 10 people got up from their seats and gave them to the fat woman with the dog. The woman sat down in one of the seats and the people crowded around her. Was es mit dem Hund geschehen? They asked. What happened to the dog? I stood in the corner by the window, leaning on my crutches, my cast touching the floor gently, and couldn't believe my eyes. I thought to myself, for me, they wouldn't get up from their seats, but for a dog, they would. There you have it. Ah, Germany. Ah, Bartleby. Ah, humanity.